we had a friend, it was a chiropractor and he was a bodybuilder, ex bodybuilder. So anytime we were around him, I was always like, I'm going to ask him questions. Right. And I never forget. I finally mustered up the courage. I must've been 15 years old. And I walked up to him and I said, Hey Joe, his name was Joe. I said, Joe, um, what do you think about cybergenics? And he goes, cyber what? And I, said, I opened it and I showed him and he looked at it and he goes, and I swear to God, that's what he told me. And I, sh I, I didn't listen hundred percent. I wish I did. That's what he told me. He said, Sal, just do this. He goes, lift weights three days a week, full body, and eat a lot of chicken, tuna fish, uh, eggs, drink some milk, and make sure you have some rice and potatoes, and you'll be great. I thought he was blowing me off. Yeah. I thought the guy, he was giving me the right advice. Yeah, yeah. But then he goes and he sits down and he says, Sal, he goes, you know what this before and after is? He goes, that's a bodybuilder that competed, and then they paid him to get out of shape, and they put that in the before picture, and he knew this, and he, he pointed that out to me. Mm -hmm. And then he said, also, if someone did get results like this, it's the workout and diet, not the supplements. And he told me all this, but as a kid, I really wanted to believe so much that I could take the right supplement stack. All right, check this out. Supplements are not the answer until they are the answer. That's when you use them. And just like that, we lost all our just sponsors. Just confuses everybody. Just lost all our sponsors. <laughs> no, no, so you know, here, here's why I say that. Uh, if if you have a, a an actual nutrient deficiency, yeah. like if you get tested and your magnesium is low or your zinc is low or you're not getting enough uh, vitamin D, supplements literally are life-changing. Like literally will change everything for you if you have an actual deficiency. In those situations, supplements are the answer. Otherwise, they're not the answer. Now, they can help with convenience. They can help with enjoyment uh, of maybe workouts or, you know, uh, just generally having fun with supplements um, or, again, with convenience. But other than that, they're not the answer. They're not the answer to your fat loss goals, your muscle building goals, your health goals, unless, of course, there's something that you absolutely need to take. What do you think it is that it, that draws us to that, even though that, that's a message we've been saying since we started this podcast? Yeah. What is it? Why do you think we're so drawn to that? Well, when you have... You're the best person to ask this, too, since you have... Since I have a supplement yeah. edition. Yeah. I know. It's, it's admitted. <laughs> you know what it is? It's, it's when you have a product that you can sell, um, then most of the information you're going to... You're going to tailor most of your information towards your product that you can sell. Like, we can tell people how to exercise and we can give advice and... You know, that's great, but selling that's very hard, right? Um, but a product, you got to buy it. If I say this yeah. supplement's great and it's going to do this stuff for you and that stuff for you, well, that, that way you can buy it. So what happens is the information in the health and fitness space is skewed towards the money generating products, which are supplements. So we're led to believe either indirectly or sometimes directly that the missing piece to our, our health and fitness routine is supplements. Like if I just took that supplement that would solve my problems or I'd get these great results or I'd gain another 10 pounds of muscle or the body fat's going to come off my body and it's the supplement that's going to do that. It's not true. That's not the case. Yeah, I mean, I blame the whole marketing we grew up with. It's it's the same exact formula. And like, it's just that companies want to find that answer that seems like it's it's simple. Like, it, And it's something that you can just consume it and then all of a sudden these great things are going to happen. It's the magical pill thing. It's It's... Nobody wants to highlight the work and uh, the effort and, um, you know, paint the vision of a long-term approach to something. They want to get this idea that they can get these results pretty quickly, pretty effectively, just from doing something very simple. Yep. I find it ironic that most people, I think, know this, yet still fall prey to that marketing. Mm -hmm. You know, that's a good, that's a very good point. I, it's been conditioned, you know, I swear. It's like, I mean, I'm, I'm a product of commercials. Yeah. yeah, like I, all the jingles, like yeah. all the like I remember that more than anything. It, it, they're masterful at it. Yeah. I, I, I think that's just it. I think it's it. They've got it down to a science so well, and much of it is subconscious. I think that people, because I think when you when we say this, and we've been saying this for a long yeah, people time, people are like, "Oh yeah, that's right." Yeah, yeah. But the, and then still, yeah, oh, like gotta get that or gotta try that or yeah. whatever. Well, I mean, again, the truth is, if you have a nutrient deficiency, um, it's life changing. It really is. I've worked with clients who've who've been low in a mineral or a nutrient. And we know this through testing mm -hmm. or through some uh, through symptoms. Sometimes the symptoms are very clear and you're like, well, it won't hurt to take this, but it might be that you're deficient in this because all your symptoms seem to match yeah. this. And then they take it and it's like, my oh, anxiety's yeah. gone. Especially or, when they've been doing so many different things to really find out what it is. Yeah. You know, what's that one thing that 
uh, I'm not doing or, or I haven't figured out yet. And when you can figure out what you're deficient in, it does feel like, wow, I have answers now that, uh, and my body is, you know, feels the result of that immediately. Yeah. Just, just to give an example of like how, how they do this, like <clears throat> when fasting really became a thing in the fitness space, it still kind of is, but at one point it was like this big trend, right? Everybody was fasting, which by the way, we used to call that just skipping meals, yeah. but it was branded fasting. It's hard to make money promoting fasting because it's nothing. Fasting literally means nothing. So, I, and we predicted this. In yeah. fact, for people who've been listening to the show since the beginning, we predicted this. We said, just wait. There's going to be a whole wave of fasting-based supplements that are going to follow now. Yeah. Sure enough, <laughs> there were supplements. I didn't think it was possible, but it, it happened. There were supplements that attached itself to fasting, right? Yeah. Take this. Same thing with keto diet or anything else. They'll attach a product because it's, it's an easy way to monetize. And if you don't buy the product, then you can't possibly get the results of the product uh, promises uh, to deliver. Um, but I mean, I was, a, I mean, I, I, I know I, I say I'm addicted to supplements and that's somewhat tongue in cheek. There's some truth to that as well. I do like taking them. I yeah, no, I them. think we, I think we give you a hard time about it, but the truth is, and we've talked about this off air before, like, I mean, it's fun. I mean, we've been doing this for a long time. And so we have the big rocks pretty taken care of, right? Yeah. Like, you know, you know what dials are the most important for you to change your physique or get in shape, to build muscle, to lose body fat, to be overall healthy. You've got that all figured out. So for you, and I think I am similar, like it's fun to like, oh, yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try this and add this to what I'm doing and see if I notice something. And yeah. then it's, it's fascinating to see if you can notice a difference. Well, so, I'll yeah. give you an example, right? So, um, to bolster my immune system, right? So for the last few years, uh, you know, we've been in a pandemic and everybody's talking about immune system. I got to stay healthy. So to bolster my immune system, I've added certain supplements that can help. For example, glutathione. Glutathione, liposomal glutathione in particular, raises glutathione levels. And when glutathione levels are, are optimal in the liver, you tend to get less severe symptoms of respiratory type diseases. This is well documented. Um, so it helps fight certain infections. Okay. If I did that, but I also missed sleep, had a shitty diet, didn't exercise, it's like, it's like putting, um, I don't know, putting sticker, an air, it's like putting an air filter on a, on a screen door on a submarine. Yeah, it's a, <laughs> maybe, sorry, yeah. That's going to sink it though. Yeah, that's going to sink it. <laughs> it's, like no, it, it's more like putting octane boost in your, you know, you know your Honda Civic. Like, oh, I got an extra, yeah. you know, four octane boost <clears> and well, I'm going to get so much more performance. You're not going to tell, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. It's, uh, it, it's, it's, I added it, but I also did everything else. I remember as a kid. When I was, you know, when I was reading all these magazines and, and I really wanted to build muscle, I would go to the back of the magazines because that's where all the crazy advertisements were. And I thought that's where I was going to find the secret. And I remember specifically, I've talked about this before, but I remember specifically it was a company called Cybergenics. You could probably find some of these old ads uh, online. And it was, a, it was the first time I'd ever seen a supplement stack, right? So it had like seven bottles of pills yeah. and then it had a picture of a dude who looked kind of beefy, but you know, kind of thick. And then the next one, he was like shredded and muscular. Mm -hmm. And it was, it sold me so hard for two reasons. One, I'm like, well, if you take that many pills, it's gotta work. <laughs> it's a lot of stuff there. <laughs> and two, the dude, the before and after was like, oh my God, that's so crazy. And I bought it and I took all the supplements, didn't do a damn thing for me. I spent like, a, it was like 150 bucks back in, I wanna say 1993, you know? And that was like a lot of money for me. I didn't, I didn't, you know, I didn't have a regular job back then. So it was a lot of money, did nothing for me. And I remember bringing that to um, a friend of ours. We had a friend, it was a chiropractor. He was a bodybuilder, ex-bodybuilder. So anytime we were around him, I was always like, I'm going to ask him questions, right? And I never forget, I finally mustered up the courage. I must've been 15 years old. And I walked up to him and I said, hey, Joe, his name was Joe. I said, Joe, um, what do you think about cybergenics? And he goes, cyber what? And I, said, I opened it and I showed him. And he looked at it and he goes, and I swear to God, that's what he told me. And I, sh I, I didn't listen hundred percent. I wish I did. That's what he told me. He said, Sal, just do this. He goes, lift weights three days a week, full body and eat a lot of chicken, tuna, fish, uh, eggs, drink some milk and make sure you have some rice and potatoes and you'll be great. I thought he was blowing me off. Yeah. I thought the guy, he was giving me the right advice. Yeah, yeah. But then he goes and he sits down and he says, Sal, he goes, you know what this before and after is? He goes, that's a bodybuilder that competed and then they paid him to get out of shape and they put that in the before picture and he knew this and he, he pointed that out to me. Mm -hmm. And then he said, also, if someone did get results like this, it's the workout and diet, not the supplements. And he told me all this, but as a kid, I really wanted to believe so much that I could take the right supplement stacked cause, you know, whatever, you know, 
Body for Life were the first masters to really do that, right? Oh, they were the they rewrote the book on on selling supplements. Yeah, yeah. It was a, it was EAS owned by Bill Phillips, and he did he put out this was brilliant a supplement review book, which really was a massive pamphlet for EAS supplements. Yeah. And what he would do is in there they would review different types of supplements, yeah, yeah. like creatine. And conveniently, work? all the AS ones yeah. were like vanadyl the best. supplement. <laughs> you know, vanadyl sulfate. Does it work? Does it not work? Glut you know, glutamine. Is it? And they would do this whole review and break down the science. And then at the end, they'd recommend like the top brands. Of course, EAS was the top. Mm -hmm. They sold millions of dollars with supplements. Because yeah, of that. I remember really. too, I'd got that and I remember thinking that. Well, then he also had the Body for Life Challenge yes. and the book where he had the before and afters and the book was just full of before and afters. Like, so, the, the, and done just like you said. You go totally. find a body that's in great shape and then you pay them to fall out of Yeah, shape. so I'll give you, so I just talked about glutathione. Okay, so there's a study with glutathione that shows that people who took it built some more muscle than people who didn't. And it was statistically significant in the sense that it's enough for them to, to, to say, wow, look, these people gain an additional, you know, pound of muscle versus these other people. Okay, now that's cool. That's really cool. It shows that glutathione might have some benefits for for muscle building, which is awesome. However, if I took those two groups, modified, looked at their workouts and their diets, took one took one group, individualized the workouts and their diets, and had no supplements, I'd crush that extra pound of muscle. I give they get five to seven pounds of muscle compared to the group, just to show an example of how much of a difference those big rocks are and how little of a difference even supplements that work not are. only not only that but I'm, I'm so skeptical because of the power of the mind mm -hmm. like it's so I, did you guys ever see that study uh it was done with um uh for free throws so they took three groups oh okay so they that. had one group they had one group who practiced free throws every single day for like 30 days they had another group who practiced not at all. Then they had another group, and it was for an hour a day, every single day, right? And then one group, none at all. And then the third group only practiced in their mind. Yeah. So they did not physically go do anything. They just laid there it's and like saw themselves rest. for an hour shooting free throws. You want to know what happened to the three groups? I bet the, the practicing in the mind and the actual practicing were similar. Yeah. So the, the group that practiced every single day for an hour saw a 24% increase in their free throws. Okay. In, in better in accuracy. Percentage. Yeah. In the accuracy, better. 24% 24, 24 increase. The group that didn't practice at all saw zero increase. They didn't mm -hmm. get better at all. The group that did it in their mind, 23%. <laughs> Isn't that wild? I know. Yeah. Talking about somebody who actually went out there, put the work in every single day and practiced that shot. Well, got that's 24% better. And the group that just laid there and thought about it. Isn't that wild? And yeah. visualized it, got 23%. That's why the gold yeah. standard is what's called a double blind placebo controlled, <clears throat> meaning that the researchers don't know who's getting the right supplement or medicine and the people being tested don't know. And they give a placebo to one side. In other words, if I'm testing, let's say I'm using Live On Labs glutathione, right? The the packet that we know that doesn't taste good. <laughs> I would get, I would create one that tastes like that, that has no glutathione right. to give to one side versus other. so nobody knows. Yeah. Why do they do that? Because placebo is measurable. Yeah, they, it will actually show a result just off of what people think. Well, yeah, well that's an example yeah. that that study is an example of that. But there's also the case too that like. If, I mean, if it gives you the results, it gives you the results. Is it worth spending the money financially, right, right. right? I mean, that was a debate we had to take in, uh, I remember- uh, Like if it works, it works. A, yeah, a psychology yeah. class. That's like, uh, what's your, like your, um, what are the drugs called for depression? Oh, uh, uh, SSRI. Uh, yes. Yeah. And a lot of the research says that the placebo is equally as effective as all those drugs are. And so the argument is like, okay, but if it shows 50% improvement- on these patients, do you stop utilizing them regardless? And so it's like- you know, Wasn't there a drug that was developed that was called um, Obacalc or something like that, which is placebo backwards, because they would actually use it. Some doctors would use it <laughs> to give to patients and they'd be like, oh, this works. So I've heard, like now I, I don't know if they're, I don't know about that one, but I definitely have heard of See. doctors giving patients like sugar pills mm -hmm. and telling them it's something because they 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 believe it's just something that they, this, this person yeah. is. Well, I mean, that's where we get into like certain products and like people like really are passionately like exclaiming that they got results from it. And it's yeah. like, and you can't really fight them on that fact. It's, it's but they really believed it. Yeah. So the the belief part of it is is definitely a it's factor powerful. in the whole thing. It's right. a real this is a real thing. It's called Obacalp, which is placebo backwards, and it comes in capsules or pills. It's sold in various colors. It's obviously nothing's in it, and they can prescribe it. They can actually get to you. Pharmacists 
a pharmacist will get a prescription for it and will know what to do. So it's almost like, I wonder how that works. Parents will give children placebo treatments on numerous occasions. So a child mimicking a parent with a migraine will occasionally ask for a pill. Oh, that makes sense. Right. So if your kids are whatever. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> or I imagine a doctor who gets a patient who comes in and Bro, claims they have this. I'd be pissed if I was a kid. I'd find that out. Or, or a, a, <laughs> you have a patient who comes in and they, they complain of this chronic issue and the doctor is checking them out and sees like nothing every time they come in and goes like, you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to give them this and see if they notice a difference. Whoa. Right. I'm sure. How mad know. would you be? Doc, that really worked. Ah, surprise. I mean, you would. We gave you nothing. <laughs> oh, yeah, well, that would be, you'd be mad when you found <laughs> no, that out. I'd be out. mad that he told me yeah, because yeah. then you don't believe in it. Yeah, and yeah. And then the fact probably goes away. Yeah, oh, keep, keep selling me the sugar pills. Yeah, oh, exactly. Who cares? Yeah. Boom, boom. Mind pump time. All right, here's the giveaway. MAPS Symmetry, one of our newest programs. It helps develop a symmetrical, aesthetic, beautiful physique, much like Justin. Ooh, Justin looks so damn symmetrical and beautiful. Anyway, if you want this program, you can get it for free, but you got to do this. Leave a comment below in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode. Subscribe to this channel. Turn on notifications. Do all those things. If we like your comment, we'll notify you in the comment section uh, that you won, and boom, you get a free program. Also, we're running a sale this month. The RGB bundle is 50% off. That's MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, MAPS Aesthetic, plus a bunch of other free stuff included. That's 50% off. And then also, we have an individual MAPS program on sales. It's MAPS Suspension. This is a suspension trainer program. If you've never worked out with Olympic rings or suspension trainers, you are missing out. It's a great way to build muscle. It's also very convenient. You don't need a lot of equipment. You just hook up your suspension trainer to your doorway, and then boom, you do your whole workout. That program is also 50% off. So if you're interested, go to mapsfitnessproducts.com and then use the code JULY50, so JULY50, no space, for that massive discount. All right, here comes the show. Hey, speaking of weird stuff, uh, the do you okay? Do you guys know what the Large Hadron Collider is? Yeah. Okay. Do you know what that I is? I don't. I don't know what that it is. is. God, looking okay. for the God particle. Yeah. So what? it's it's a particle accelerator. Um, so I I don't know. I really don't know what yeah, it is. I, I just kind of know I can't about explain it. any of it. So well, it's yeah, a massive. It's <laughs> massive. It, it's it's literally this huge underground tunnel circle. Yeah. It's a big circle tunnel underground, and I think it it goes through two different countries. That's how big it is. What? They spend a lot of money on it, and they, and what they do is they take particles and they spin them around and accelerate them to almost the speed of light, and then collide them. Yeah. And then what happens from there? Trying to create like the Big Bang Theory. Well, very good. I mean, yeah. that's close. Yeah, I mean, yeah. that was like they're trying to simulate it initially, yeah. right? Yeah, very good. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. they're gonna be like, like you're surprised, like that. I had <laughs> Like fuck off, bro! It's like when your kid That's exactly what you're like, right? <laughs> like, like, I'm so proud of you. I'm, Adam, on the head, I'm yeah. so proud of you. Adam's all <laughs> fuck off, Adam's guy. Like, Adam's like, <laughs> you, you mean science? <laughs> Very good, Adam. That's good. <laughs> I just imagine Aaron. Yay! No, <laughs> Give him a star, Doug. Oh Give him a gold God. star. He gets gold star. No, what it's what because you're. No, it's because you didn't know what it was. And then yeah, no, I have that. no idea what it was. But I mean, anyway, they collide them, and they're observing, you know, what happened during the initial stages of the universe and they've they identified new particles in fact i don't know what these are but i saved them because it's so crazy so they found a new type of pentaquark <laughs> with particles and a first ever pair of tetraquarks don't know what that means <laughs> what the hell is a quark? but apparently they're all excited about it okay anyway have you guys been here about the conspiracy theories around this whole thing mm -mm. okay so they turned it on a while this. ago and lots of people were like you got to create a black hole you're gonna you're gonna create an alternate dimension. Yeah. You're gonna move tear a fabric in the un in the universe. The space time continuum, yeah. and everybody's like, so they turned it on a while ago, and then all the weird shit start. All the weird shit that's happening right now kind of happened after that. So people were like, you already put us in an alternate dimension. See, the Mayans were just a little bit off. Yes, <laughs> maybe that's what it was. A little bit off. Then they turned it on again. I think yesterday, and they just they're slamming particles together. And people are like, oh, great. Like, now we're in another wow. alternate universe and more weird. So this is relatively new. They haven't been doing this for very long. Uh, it's They've had it for like 10, 15 years. Mm -hmm. But it's so trip, the, trip off this. Initially, when they kept trying to get it to do what it did or what it does, it kept turning off or breaking. And people thought because something what because at those speeds and the experiments that time doesn't travel forward and back, and somehow the Brit machine was breaking itself to prevent. Anyway, it actually worked eventually, uh, and now. So who, who gets to control this thing? 
science people. <laughs> science, <laughs> scientists. Yeah. Science people? Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Dr. Octopus. Dude, I, <laughs> dude, dude, yes, I, have, I, no I have I have one for you. Speaking of sea creatures, right? I got one for you. So uh, you you have, um, I believe it's your house, right? Above your bed. Don't you have, what's it called? A mandala? I don't know what's above my bed. A mandala or whatever? <laughs> no, I don't have it above my bed anymore. But yeah, I do oh, have a huge do. mandala. Yeah, a wooden mandala. Yeah. yeah. So do you, do you know uh, what that's inspired from? No. Okay, so- uh, Japanese pufferfish. Wow. They do that in the sand to attract a mate. They design that. Really? Yeah, uh, check it out. Doug. Pull up pull up a Japanese pufferfish mandala. You know what else is weird about pufferfish? Huh. That dolphins will 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 trade pufferfish back and forth and get high off their yeah, off the pufferfish. Off the poison. Oh yeah. They literally will like use intentionally it intentionally get Yeah, like they're trying well, to get Remember uh, birds do that with uh, ants. Yeah. Oh. There's ant birds will let yeah. like uh, these certain type of fire ants like get sting on their them? wings, sting them and it gets them all high. Wow, that's weird. Dolphins yeah. do weird I mean, shit, bro. Isn't there a lot of examples of that in nature of like of, of the animals? Look at that. Oh wow! So yeah. pufferfish does that. Uh huh. Have you ever eaten pufferfish? Doug must have. You've had puffer a couple times. Yeah. Do you have to sign waivers and everything? No. no. If you They're cut it like, right, here, if you do it wrong, luck. you're fucked. Yeah. Apparently, you have to be licensed, I believe, in Japan to prepare it. It's called a fugu. Mm. That's the, the name, the Japanese name. Fugu. Yeah. yeah. It's and like, uh, not like Fubu the brand? No. 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 It's not, not for not us. That. But, I'll, no. I'd like to try that out. Isn't that I, fascinating, though? That the, he, he, it's cool. To I watched attract the whole, a mate. Yeah, I watched the whole video. Of you know, him. the shit that guys do to get girls. Is pretty <laughs> <good>. <laughs> Look what I made. Yeah, Pufferfish Love explains Come some mysterious underwater me. circles. J Justin, you had yeah. something you, you wanted. I don't know if it's really yeah. inspired by that, by well, the way, but that's what they call it. They call it a mandala, so I don't know which one came first. You were talking about, like, kind of the disruption of reality and sort of how everything's been all wacky uh let's just say for the last few years and like simulation theory and all these crazy things but uh i think a lot of people are sleeping on this event that happened that um, was actually in our backyard it was in san jose uh and i heard this i, I think they're talking about it on, on a podcast on joe rogan it was like um these guys that had um basically they they Doug, I, I put it up here. It was about they like sniped part of an, an energy plant around Metcalf here. sniper attack. Matt, yeah, Metcalf. Of a Metcalf. Yeah, and so like they they basically shot and and blew up uh, a bunch of these like energy what? Um, producing uh, machines or like uh, buildings and 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 nobody ever was arrested. Nobody was ever was tried. It to, for were they this. trying to mess with the power grid? Yeah, exactly. Like it was like they're. It was almost like a test run in, in, in a sense. And this oh. is where my mind goes with that because why – and it was organized. They said that there was like flashlights that were like signaling for when a group of guys came in with, you know, masks and all that and like – and destroyed some of these like power grids. Ooh, it says, Whoa, there's like a whole – there's a whole landing page dedicated to this? unresolved. Yeah. What? We read that paragraph I didn't know, there, Doug. But I was just tripping because this isn't like our backyard. I oh, didn't, do you remember any news around this? No. no. Read this, Doug. So in the early morning hours of April 16th, 2013, a group or individual would attack an electrical substation outside of San Jose, California. Armed with at least two rifles, this mysterious entity would open fire on the station's transformers, causing more than $50 million in damages. Years later, federal officials still have no idea who perpetrated this bizarre attack on America's power grid yeah. or why. Yeah. I've read yeah. that our power grid is very susceptible to attack, apparently. Yeah. Right? Like yeah. it's not well, that Well, obviously, large. if it's one guy can go in there alarming. and do $15 million worth of damage. It's the Soviets. How, bro, <laughs> you, how many tinfoil hat things do you have to be reading to find an article that's from 2013 <laughs> and fucking dig no, it up? No, somebody brought it up, and I was just tripping on that because I didn't know that happened and, uh. like, why that wasn't getting more news because that's pretty problematic to be able to – you know, think about people having that kind of access of being able to just like get to these power grids because that's we're so vulnerable without power. Think about what the what everything is would look like, you know, if all the power grid Dude. is gone. Dude, like, you know how it is when like blackouts and all that, like, there's just crime well, almost that's within what, that, hours. That's what they say where we're most susceptible, right? Yeah, I mean, we're so if like another country or now, an EMP, yeah, yeah, but uh, but okay, so you want to know, you want to have an example of what it would be like. You ever read about the the blackout? And it was in 1970s in New, York, in New right? York City. Yeah, I forgot how long it lasted. Maybe Doug can find it, but they lost power, and it was for like, I don't know. I want to say a week, maybe, mm -hmm. and it went crazy. Like people 
became savages. I know yeah. the, the party. The part about that that's so crazy is like a week without power isn't that big of a deal, but it's it's the way we all react. That's right? yeah. of course, yeah. of course. No. I want to know how long it was. I want to see what. And what I think it's by. more that like they didn't know if it was ever, you know coming back on anytime soon. Mm -hmm. so, it's only twenty five I mean, hours. It was off. Twenty five hours. Yeah, that's 19, the great blackout. No, nineteen seventy seven. That was it. Nineteen twenty five hours. <laughs> that's it and all that. <laughs> what the hell's wrong with you guys over there? In chaos. Do you Just guys ever forty eight hours? It's good. Lord. Did you ever watch the episodes of Twilight Zone episode like that? Where uh, it's great, by the way. Twilight Zone best best show. Of, uh, such great writing. There was an episode where there was a whole neighborhood. Then the power goes out, so the neighbors come out and start talking to each other. Then the cars don't start, so now machines aren't working. They start turning on each other. They blamed it on this one person. They all attack them. Anyway, it turns into just pandemonium chaos. And then the camera zooms out to this UFO, and there's aliens in the UFO, and like experiment number one is finished. We now know how long it takes before they start killing each other. And I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sh damn, that was good, bro. Yeah, that's true. Tell me to get chills right now. Yeah. <laughs> it's so good, you right? Make, every time you bring up a, a, one of their aliens. episodes, you do make me want to go back and watch it. So them. good, dude. Yeah. So yeah. good. They're all black and white, but they're all super good. <laughs> you know what's trippy was you sent an article. I don't know if it, it was an article. It was Who, like me? a- Yeah, you. It was a science thing, which is kind of weird. Oh, no, the time, that tripped me out. Time dilation. Yes, the fact that you, if you left at 15 years old, you spent five years in space, and then you-, you I came, got it, I got it right yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, that tripped so, me out. So if you leave Earth at the age of 15 yeah. in a spaceship at the speed of light mm -hmm. and spend five years in space, when you get back on Earth, you'll be 20. But all your friends who were 15 when you left will be 65 years old. That's called time dilation. So that's a real thing. So you want to know what's trippy about that? That's crazy. What? Okay. You know that time on Mount Everest, <clears throat> the peak of Mount Everest moves slower than time on the sur on. on uh, you said that. Level. I didn't know that. The closer you are to, the, the more gravity there is, which there's more gravity the closer you are to the center of the earth, yeah. the, 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 either the, fa the, the, faster the faster times moves, yeah. the slower it moves further away. And they can measure this. Satellites, they have to account for satellites distance and speed. So they have to change. And it's very minuscule. Like we wouldn't be able to tell, mm -hmm. but they have to change the clocks on the satellites so that they could do GPS and stuff. Otherwise they'll be off. So all because time is really based on rotation. Just, just speed and yeah. gravity both have effects on, on time. Yeah. How that weird is that? What was that movie where, uh, wasn't it? Uh, what was his name? Superman spinning. <laughs> no, earth dude. Backwards. Yeah, destroy the whole <laughs> earth. I know. So dope. Oh, man. What was that, that That movie where they were, he went to another planet and because he landed on the surface of it and it was super strong gravity by the time he came up that his buddies on the space station were all old and shit. Oh. What was that movie, dude? It had a weird looking robot. Mm. I can't remember. I remember Do you know one. what I'm talking about, Kyle? Kyle has no idea. He doesn't watch yeah, weird sci-fi stuff like that. No, it he was a great more, movie. He wears socks with his sandals. He's not into stuff. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> Can we stuff, talk about that? stuff you guys are into. You know what okay. he was I, wear, a, I wear socks with my sandals. All right. Yeah. What was the name of the guy? Okay, man. Wolf of Wall Street. The guy that was doing... Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, what's yeah. his name? Matthew, Matthew McConaughey. McConaughey. It was yeah. a movie with Matthew McConaughey. Okay. And it was when they go to space. Oh, Interstellar? No. Think, no. Yeah. Was it Interstellar? Yeah. It was Probably. Interstellar. Yeah. I think it was that. Is it Matthew McConaughey in Interstellar? Yes. Oh, I thought that was Matt Damon. That was that was the one. It was the other Matt? Yeah. One of the Matt's. Matt Look Damon. it up, Doug. Yeah. Uh -huh. Speaking it was, it was Matt, uh, McConaughey. Yeah. yeah. Speaking of, uh, I said Mount Everest earlier. Dude, you guys want some more cool stuff. So um, <clears throat> someone sent me, I think it was my cousin, sent me this uh, like little infographic on nuclear bombs that have we've set off and tested mm -hmm. and their relative size. You want, okay, trip off this. So we dropped a bomb on Hiroshima, right? That was the, the, one of the, that was the first and one of the only bombs ever used in war. The Russians, the Soviets, tested a nuclear bomb called the Tsar Bomba. Yeah. That was 3,500 times more powerful yeah. than the one on Hiroshima. So, ready for the, it was so powerful, it made a mushroom clad that went 33 miles in the sky. Like, where did they set this off? I mean, it was in the ocean? It was over an island. Yeah, because, I mean, okay, so it was like Bikini Island. The, the uh, Bikini Atolls or whatever? Is where, I mean, we tested a we lot did. of stuff, right? But they, they, did the, bombs. they did the biggest one. And the sound wave was so big, it circled the Earth three times. What? <laughs> yeah, dude. That's how big. And you want to know, here's, here's what makes it worse. They made the bomb half as powerful. So it was supposed to be 100 megaton, I think it was. They brought it down to 50 because they were afraid so of So how much like radiation and everything else, like remnants of that uh, uh, can no be idea. traceable? I don't know. Right, it's a good point. I was talking about war with my uncle while he was visiting. We just right, he served right, and we were mm -hmm. he was telling old war stories and stuff like that to me. And did you know that we lost more people in nine eleven than Pearl Harbor? Oh yeah, I yeah that's not, true. Huh? I didn't know that. 
Yeah, that's oh, true. More, and th- th- those are all civilian lives in yeah, 9-11. Yeah. Well, mostly. And then you have some, obviously, some uh, first responders. Mm-hmm. That was a big chunk like that. But I did not realize that we lost less people in Pearl Harbor than we did in 9-11. It was one of the few. I don't think we, we've never been attacked on our homeland except for that, right? Mm. If I'm mistaken. I think never. those are the two times. The two, yeah. Those are the two times we've ever been attacked yeah. on, on the homeland. But you would think, I mean, wouldn't you think Pearl Harbor was was worse? I would have thought Pearl Harbor was way worse. Mm. Well, yeah, too, because they there was like a lot of like dog fights and, and yeah. planes and yeah, a lot of uh, uh, ships that went and down. Dropping bombs and yeah. stuff. Dude, was it? it you want speaking of World War II, there was this Japanese soldier that after the Japanese surrendered, he never got the message, and because he was so loyal to the emperor, because remember the, the Japanese were very like fierce, they would not give up. Obviously, they had the kamikazes, whatever. This guy holed himself up on an island, lived on the island by himself. I think they found him when he was seventy something years old, and they found him. They say, "Hey, the war's over. You, you guys gave up." And he's like, "Oh, okay." He literally lived on this island for how many years? Decades. Decades by himself. What? He's like, he thought he was in the war still. And he's like, I'm just going to stay here and wait just, for the Americans. Sitting to it out. That's fucked up. Dude. <laughs> what? Yeah, dude. That's crazy, crazy, dude. That could probably find him. Uh, that's a crazy. I that's know. A crazy yeah, he stuff. hid in a Philippine jungle for 30 years. 30 years? <laughs> 30 years? You know what, though? Hiding. Hold on a second. Maybe he made that shit. Maybe you don't want to go home. Yeah. Like, oh, my wife. So <laughs> I'm going to stay <laughs> here. a new family. I mean, he's, <laughs> like, he's just like, yeah. Yeah, it's not so bad here. It's tropical. Yeah. You know no, I think actually the truth is, I think he lived by himself in a cave. For thirty years no and survived. I, I'm serious. You got it. There's something got to be wrong there for no, you. Okay. Like, do some investigating. What's, there's Wait. another story here. A guy in Guam, another Japanese soldier for 27 years. Oh, so okay. there's a couple stories. Second like place. That. Yeah. 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 You beat him. Not not a good. I enough. know, dude. I ain't waiting that long. Yeah. I, <laughs> yeah. I mean, you would try and check or find out sooner than that. Well, right? his orders are wait here, and if anybody comes, you know, kill him. Mean, so a, he's probably just chilling in the jungle soldier. this whole time. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Eating pigs and bananas. Yeah, wow. I, don't know, I don't know what grows over there. <laughs> you survive like that. That's crazy, dude. So my my son, my baby son, now he he knows how to. He says no like this to us. He waves his finger. Yeah, yeah. Now he says it's no. like a diva. Yeah. No, no. Uh-huh. He does this. You know, you know why he does that? Because Jessica does that to him. She goes like this. And so now that's the way he says no. But now he says no too. But he says it's so funny. Yeah. He goes no. So yeah. now, <laughs> so now I make him say that all the time. Yeah. Like, hey, buddy, can you say no? No. Yeah. yeah. I'll just crack up. Max has completely accelerated. So the I remember. Okay, it's now we're on week three, I believe, since the surgery. Mm. And right away, I could tell that like he understood more. He was trying to say more. This weekend was like an explosion of like words. That's great. I mean, right? Yeah. He's now at a, awesome. now all of a sudden we're at the place where you can get him to try and repeat everything mm-hmm. you say. Like it was him like sporadically saying stuff, and then after the surgery, you noticed that like that was starting to come in a little more clear, and you could kind of understand a little bit more of what he was trying to say every once in a while. But it was still like one word at a time here and there. To all of a sudden, like multiple words, repeats everything that you say. I mean, it was funny. My aunt and uncle were over, so they were having such a good time playing with him. They haven't had a chance to like be with just him. And I've been doing this thing with him since he was like practically born, uh, where I tickle him and I'd say, say it, say it. And I'm like poking him and tickling him. Say it, say it. I love your daddy. I love your daddy, right? I say it, I say that to him like that. And I, I've been doing that and he can't talk, right? So he yeah. hasn't been able to talk or say anything. He burst it out and said it. Like, and I was like, and Katrina was like, oh my God. And my aunt and I were like, what? I'm like, he's never said that before. You had to stop. Yeah, I had to stop. I, stopped, <laughs> I had to stop doing it because he actually said it. I was like, oh my God, dude. He has a, He went from not being able to say like stuff really clear to be able to say, I love you, daddy, like that. Oh. I was like, oh my God, dude. It was so great to, to see that. And it's like, do you get emotional when you just, oh yeah. Yeah, no, of course. We got all I got all excited and Katrina got all she was in the kitchen and she heard she heard it in the kitchen and I was inside the living room playing with them. She's like, Oh my god, he just said the whole thing. I oh, said, I know. And that shit makes me emotional. Oh, he's yeah. a, your kid is a, such a good little hugger. Like I when we were on vacation and I go up to him like, Come here, Matt, give me a hug. And he gave me this big squeeze. He's Yo, such a he's, lover. Yeah, I know. He definitely is he's and my aunt my aunt so my aunt's first experience with him was not that long ago at like a, a family party. So he's got this really interesting personality. Like so Max, if he's in an environment where it's really loud and a lot of stuff going on, he's like he's very kind of reserved and like an observer. Like he'll just kind of watch and he's kind of he almost seems skeptical of everybody. Like unless he really knows like he know if you've already built that relationship, like obviously me sure. or Katrina or my sister or someone, or maybe one of you guys who already has a bond with him. 
then he's pretty normal with you. But strangers or people that have only seen him once before, he's kind of reserved. And so my aunt, who is like, she has a ton of kids. She has a ton of grandkids. She's great with kids. She's like, she did homeschool all our kids. And she was great in my life. Like, and she was trying to play with him. And he was really like, kind of standing. And I was like, oh, I felt so bad. I'm like, oh, it's my aunt. And like, and my, my son didn't really take to him. And she has no idea what a, what a sweetheart he is. Well, they stayed this weekend. And he got used to them. Oh, yeah. yeah. And he was like, and she had right away, like, and had already within the first day had built that relationship with him. And we're in the living room, stuff like that. And she was, I don't even know what she was doing, but she already had trained him to do something. Like, she would be like, oh, I need a hug so bad. I need and then he would get up across the room, run over and jump in her oh, lap. Oh, that's and great. Give her a big hug. And so she was eating it all Yeah, up. my dad, he's, <clears throat> my son really likes his no no, likes my dad, right? A lot. And it's because my dad will give him and do anything he wants. So my dad, I tell him, listen, I don't want him to watch too much TV. Okay, okay, no problem. <laughs> sure enough, five minutes later, yeah. my dad looks at me and goes, he really wants to watch it though. Look, he's asking for it. He really wants to watch it. I'm like, okay, whatever, dude. Put it on. <laughs> Put it on, I guess. I don't know. Uh, oh, he wants to go outside? Go outside. Oh, you want to buy him that thing? Okay. Or you want to give him a snack? Give him so it's, he gets everything he wants. And my dad's like, he loves me. I'm like, yeah, of course he does. <laughs> he gets everything he wants, dude. I, uh, you know, yeah. do we, I, do we talk about the plane rides with the kids and stuff like that? Did you bring it up on the show? I don't think I brought that up on the no. show. I was rough, dude. No, yeah, you, you sat through a rough one, huh? Bro, that was so. I think every parent, well, not every, but most parents have gone through one experience like this. And yeah, I, I have, have one all share after. You I have this. yet to go through one, except for recently. So we were on, we were on the tarmac ready to get on the plane in Mexico. So it's already hot and humid. You know, Aurelius hasn't had a nap, so he's already kind of, you know, wily and cranky or whatever. Like, you know what? We'll, hopefully he'll sleep on the plane. He's kind of already acting, again, a little cranky. Right before we get on the plane, literally they're like, okay, everybody, so let's start walking towards the plane. Steps off a curb, boom, bashes his face into the ground, busts his lip. So he's bleeding in his mouth. We got to get on the plane. He's inconsolable. He's screaming. <clears throat> So now we get on the plane, trying to clean him up. He's screaming. I, he slept for 20 minutes. The rest of the plane ride, he screamed uncontrollably. Like at the top of his lungs, <laughs> in the plane, like, ah, oh, my worst, ah. night, worst And you nightmare. can't, you know, and you know, you can't sit him down. You get like shell shock after that. Dude. Man. That's it's, how I felt when I to me. was so proud of Jessica because she was so calm. She kept singing to him. She would try to rub his head. She was very calm. I'm sitting next to her. He wants nothing to do with me because he's hurt. He wants mom. So yeah. I try to reach over and he just like reaches new levels of screaming. So it's back to her. So I'm just sitting there and I'm like, man, I feel so bad. So as a fall, I mean, I can't do anything except for think in my head. If anybody speaks up, I'm going to slap him on this plate because I can't, <laughs> I can't do anything else, right? That's all I'm I like, can do is beat Nobody better people. say shit. Yeah. Yeah, I'm looking around like, oh, you know, it's my kid. You better shake my... But, it, but reality was everybody was so supportive on the plane. People kept saying, hey, look, we have kids. We understand. I get, But, man, that is rough. Then we get off the plane. He's still screaming. He's still in console, but still having trouble, whatever. We're trying to get through customs because you have to get through customs once you get to the U.S. Long-ass line. So I make up a lie to get through. So sorry, everybody at TSA. I squeezed through uh, <laughs> by, by making up some yeah. bullshit. But we had to get through. My kid was freaking out. He's doing the same thing in the airport. And then I don't know why we didn't think of this. My older son's like, isn't there a painkiller you can give him? I'm like, fuck. Tylenol. Tylenol. <laughs> gave him some Tylenol, and it totally helped. It made a big difference. So he was a little screaming on the, the second flight, but not as bad. Oh, my God. Doug was really helpful. Brianna was really helpful. Jessica lost her shit for literally one minute. Like, the whole time, she lost it for a minute in the airport. I could tell. And I took him for a minute, and then she was back to being a champion. And I was like... Man, I don't know how how she was able to handle that, but yeah, that was rough, dude. That's my worst nightmare. It's that, so it's, rough. It, yeah, you because you can't you can't do anything, and no. you're stuck in that place and so, endure it. Oh yeah. I, on I, the second plane, I, I we got on. He's kind of <clears throat> cranky, and you know, Tylenol hasn't kicked in. And I told everybody yeah. in our in our area, I said, I'm gonna if he screams, I said I'm gonna buy a drink for everybody. I'm apologizing <laughs> ahead of time. And everybody was super cool. No, we get it. You know, no big deal. Yeah, so, that was right. my first trip to Hawaii with um, with Ethan. And he was sick. Like, he just got sick. And unfortunately, it was like he stayed with, like, my, with Courtney's parents. And her mom was sick, didn't tell us. And then we – this is right before – and then she recovered. And then right before we left. And so he got it. And then he had, like, this flu. And, uh, and it was just like – inconsolable because of the pressure of the plane once we took off and was just screaming 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 and so i was like 
he was small enough. I think he was like eight or nine months. And so I'm like holding him and like going up and down the aisles and everything. And like nothing could work, you know? And so, and then everybody's giving you the look and the sigh and the this and that. And I'm just like, yeah. Yeah. yeah well, <laughs> oh, it's bad for you. Yeah. Yeah. yeah real bad for you. <laughs> and then like, dude, after all that, we, I still had, uh, uh, the idea that, well, maybe, you know, it won't be so bad if we, if we try to like, he, he looks like he's doing better today. Like we were like trying to plan a trip around. We shouldn't have planned anything. Right. We've yeah. just been like, okay, like we're done. We give up. <laughs> uh, but we, we went on this like boat ride, uh, to this Island and uh i might have told this before but like so he same thing he was just like screaming 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 and just couldn't control himself and i'm like in on a boat that's confined to this room right so everything there was packed with people like all and they're they all looking up and nobody said a word even the guy that was normally like hey i'm the announcer guy that's yeah. like describing everything that you're looking at was just like ooh. <laughs> you know, like, wouldn't say anything anymore. <laughs> and, like, and then I, I pretended I'm like, oh, this is crazy, right guy. Like I was like pretending to like throw him off the board, you know. <laughs> and that did not go well. I was like, I'm joking. I'm not gonna get rid of him, you know. Like, come on, guys. I'm not. You know. It's like, well, because they don't know me. Because so. parents lose their shit. You know? Yeah, I was like, he's gonna throw the that's, kid off. bro. It's my. It is. It is up there with top fears of my life, bro. I, I, I like you can't fear, do anything. Yeah, so I fear being on a plane and him just uncontrollably screaming and so katrina makes fun of me all the time because if he even gets like fussy at all and we're in public i'm like let's go we're out here <laughs> i don't even want, I don't even want to, shit on yeah, I don't want to be right, locked into a position like that where i have to i will say though and i was talking to my mother-in-law about this because she asked how max did with it. and by the way we got stuck at the airport for like six hours so they told us yeah to be, you guys had they a told us to be at the airport three hours early which are, we got there three and a half hours early. And then we had like a two hour delay yeah. and then the flight. So he was like nine hours of That's traveling a long time and was a saint, dude. He was incredible. And what I attribute most of it to, of course, I know a lot of it it's has all, to it's been a drill. Yeah. <laughs> <Your kid's laughs> a drill. Lots of NyQuil. You know, yeah. you know, <laughs> Rub some tests on yeah, yeah, yeah. Chloroform. Yeah. Uh, no, what, what I really think, and it's funny because, and I'm sure people will laugh and make fun of me or laughed when I said it way back when, but you remember when before Max came, I was talking about some of the things that I wanted like prioritize. And I thought, I, I and I believed in my head at that time, right? that I was like, he was not going to get any TV till he was like five or yeah. six. Like, he's like, he's still so young. He, I'm no, Justin playing. and I are like, all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right I'm like, never. Yeah. He's like, <laughs> like, we're our goal. But Keep up the fight. Yeah. Here's the thing <laughs> that I think where it is. So that obviously didn't happen. Like my son has watched TV he's, and he's three years old. So he's watched TV before I thought he was going to watch TV. But we did do such a conscious effort of Katrina and I not really watching. Oh, it's TV. a treat, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. It is so rare that he gets it, right? That, I mean, he goes day. I mean, we were in Mexico. He like never got it. I mean, yeah. I think there was like two nights where we let him, we, we stayed up and watched all TV together as a family. Other than that, like he doesn't really get to use his iPad or very much, but when he does, he gets so excited. No, that, you know, the, so we do the same thing with the yeah, yeah. and it, it worked. And he's traveled uh, many times on planes and he does really well because if he gets fussy, that's what we do. Mm -hmm. We'll pull out the phone, play a video. And because he doesn't watch it very often, it's yeah. a treat and it works. Yeah. Did not work this time. I was showing him videos, whatever. He's hitting the phone out of the way. Ah! Like oh, just wow. scream. Oh, nothing, bro. Oh, nothing. Wow. I tried to give him candy. I tried to give him cookies. I pulled everything out. <laughs> yeah. Everything. I'm like, I'm gonna give you anything you want if you just stop crying. <laughs> <laughs> you know, give me some whiskey. The kid well, I mean, the whiskey. poor, I mean, the poor guy. I saw his lip. Yeah, I mean, his, no. Oh, he hit it. He yeah, busted it. Good, it was, bro. He yeah, busted dude. it. It wasn't like he had like a little spill and was no. Mad. Not only like, did he, he bust hurt. his lip, which he got a good one. I thought for a second might need stitches, but it didn't. He also hurt his tooth a little bit, and I'm keeping an eye on it because mm. I'm I'm hoping that no damage was done. And you'll know, you know, later as if it gets well. Lucky it's his baby teeth, anyways. Though, yeah, so but then, does, but so. then he'd be, you know, yeah. until his permanent yeah. one grows, yeah. and he'd have no tooth for a while. Yeah, yeah. For a, uh, yeah that was my my brother did that. He knocked his his front both oh, his front really? teeth out. Yeah, we were playing in this in the in a I cardboard box. That did that. He yeah. fell forward. His teeth came out, and it you know I don't know when you're when you're adult. Like front teeth come in. It takes a little while, right? So it's like for four years, my brother had no teeth. Oh my in the God, front. I did that to my best friend, this girl. I, I told this too. Like we were trying to hide because like her parents came and we're like, no, let's hide so you can stay longer. You know, it was the whole thing of like, you know, let's stay. And, and I like, like hide here. And I like pushed her like by her head and her 
face went into a tree and like her oh. teeth were <laughs> stuck in the tree. <laughs> oh, wow. Just, wow. How hard you I push her? So Jesus bad. I don't know. I, <laughs> I was just like, hide here. You have you don't have a strength meter. Okay, <laughs> Jeremy. <laughs> I know. I'm trying to teach Everett this because he's got the same problem. All or none? All or none. It, like full throttle, you know? <laughs> <laughs> it's so great. I'm sorry, Emily. I, again, I apologize. <laughs> yeah. for I my... told you guys when my brother broke that girl's arms on accident, right? Did I tell you guys about that? No. Yeah, he was he was in uh, fifth grade, sixth grade, and he had this crush on this girl. Right? By the way, she turned and he out broke to, both her arms. Hold on, hold on. She turned <laughs> out to be a model. Both by the arms? way, she ended up becoming like a professional model later on. So anyway, he had this huge crush on this girl. Super loved her, flirted with her, whatever. Anyway, you know when you're in fifth, I think it was in fifth grade. When you're in fifth grade and you're a boy and, and you, you want to flirt with a girl, yeah, what do you, you do? Push them or you hit them. You or push them <laughs> or you pull their shirt. You fuck with them, right? Yeah. She was running to get in line. He tripped her. And she fell. <laughs> <laughs> Broke both oh, arms. She broke both, both arms. Both of them. <laughs> both. So she had to go to oh school. Hey, God. hey, oh, here's the best the part. She went to school. She had to cast like this, right? <laughs> and so my brother had to do all her work for her oh, until she healed. That was his punishment for tripping. Her. Shut now, up. Yeah, after that, she never wanted to go out with bro, like, how Why, bro? You broke Ooh, her arm. I wonder how devastating that would be. Dude. I know, dude. What is it? Isn't it Jordan dude, Peterson who talks about the psychology and that why we do that? Is there? There's a reason why we we do that. Why? Oh, we, I have no idea. Yeah, I've heard him talk about it before. Why he, we tease each other? Y- yeah, when we're little. We're no, trying to get the attention well, of girl. Yeah, yeah. Like why? And why is physical like that? Because you do you 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 kind of poke at him. Yeah, you do physical stuff like that. Both sexes, I believe, are are guilty of it. And I know there's a. There's a reason behind why that like what that's how we do it or why we do it at that young age because we don't know yet how to communicate. You don't know the social cues, I think. Yeah, at that point, right? Yeah. <laughs> You're just trying to get their attention. Oh, I mean, that's what you tell. That's what I told my daughter when she was younger. There was this boy that kept messing with her, and I said, "He's doing that because he likes you." Yeah. What? I said, "Yeah. The yeah, only reason why he's messing with you, yeah. he's just dumb at it. You know, yeah. he hasn't yeah. figured it yeah. out yet. And that's we don't figure I mean, it out until we're thirty. So it's yeah. just gonna keep doing stupid <laughs> shit. Still don't know. <laughs> it's true. Uh, guys are dumb until we're like thirty. Yo, and then did you did you guys see that deal with Daily Wire with Jordan Pearson? Jordan Pearson signed with them. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, I, I tried to find the contract deal. I don't know if you... Did you see it, Doug, by chance? Like, I wanted to see what he, he signed. He must have got paid So back, his dude. podcast is what they acquired? Well, they... Because, like, he's kind of like a... I'm an author. Like, he does, a, like, a lot of things. Yeah, so I don't know if... I think so. Like, I think that it will be... Okay, the same way that Spotify came after Joe Rogan, right? Mm-hmm. I think it's the same like thing. Like, exclusivity with that or something. Yeah, I mean, we talked about this a long time ago. That this is the future. What's going to be... That's going to happen. Of course. Well, it must right. have been easier because he just got kicked off of Twitter, so... Yeah, he so, did. Yeah, yeah. yeah, he yeah. got kicked off Twitter. So did Ruben. Ruben got suspended. Ruben did yeah. too. For, oh, you know wow. why? Ruben got suspended for screenshotting and talking about what Jordan Peterson got suspended for. So they no suspended. way. Yeah. Crazy. Dave Ruben? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, wow. I mean, you know, what are you going to do? Private yeah. organization, they can do what they want, but I, I think that they're making themselves... They're 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 gonna lay they're what are they doing digging their own grave is what they're doing mm-hmm. they're gonna they're asking for regulations because they're gonna get blamed by both parties if you know that's happens. an interesting thing to think about too because like Daily Wire is like one of those that they're I, I feel like they're gaining more traction I don't really know like other there must be other competing conservative kind of uh, entertainment or like um, media uh, outlets companies and outlets kind hey. of emerging you know these days just because it's so like. Taboo. I, I look. I love it. Not because I'm a fan, but I love competition. Yeah, well, that's, exactly. love that's, 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 that's what's going to happen. I I don't see regulation. I don't see them stopping. I don't see. I see Twitter staying the way Twitter is. I see Instagram staying the way Instagram and Facebook. This, I see them at YouTube. All staying the same. What I see though is that they've already now laid the blueprint on how to create these platforms. A competitor will come up yeah. that will offer the opposite side. Well, and look, we will see just like we, I mean, it's so, it's so funny. It's called social media and old media, which is the news and TV, which has been divided forever. Fox and CNN. Right. Yeah. I mean, you're well, going to see the same Fox, thing. Fox proved it. Fox came out and yeah. said, we're going to be conservative, right? Quote unquote. And they crushed because there wasn't anybody really, Serving that demographic, and I think Daily right. Wire is trying to make that move. They are. Yeah, I they're think trying they're, to. They're doing all media, right? So movies, interesting to watch. Yeah, yeah, movies, music, um, animation. They're going all. The, they're doing it all, and because there's nobody that outwardly says. We're, like, can you think of another company, a media company, that says we are a conservative media company? No, I'm, that's why I'm actually surprised. Uh, I mean, it's obviously it's a huge monster to tackle, uh, but it, it, I'm sure there's going to be other ones coming up yeah. if it's successful. Yeah. Right? Speaking of media, have you guys seen? Okay, so you guys know Minions, right? The the that whole series, mm-hmm. crushing the new Minions is crushing, really? crushing at the box offices. 
And young men, teenage boys, this is a thing. They're showing up to the minion. All suits. Wearing suits. What is that all about? I have no idea. It's got to be something to do with in the movie. What? Maybe. I saw something stupid where they had like a, a bunch of guys trying to smuggle in like a whole huge trash can full of bananas to watch it. it oh, wow. Like, well, like, well, it's a thing apparently with teenage boys and they're showing up and making a big deal about it. And it's causing a lot of Did you media. ask your son about it? I didn't. I should, huh? Yeah, you oh, yeah. should. Yeah, because he knows. I feel like you're so out of touch of that stuff that he would keep you. <laughs> <laughs> you're like a bunch of old funny guys trying to talk about. What are these rascals doing? Bad that's hey, happening what's, right what's now. What's your favorite CD? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you listen. To I CDs? saw though. I saw the same thing you saw. Yeah, yeah I saw on TikTok a bunch yeah. of a bunch of clips. Hey, of speaking of media and stuff, so I went again to the physical uh, Viore store in Santana Row. We have a location here in San Jose that sells Viore clothing. And I went in and uh, when I buy stuff, because we're sponsored by them, they give us a discount. Um, and so I said, oh, you could pull me up. The person working there didn't know who I was, didn't know Mind Pump. What? But as soon as she pulled it up. Listen, I'm a big deal. I know, as soon as she, I know. I feel so <laughs> dumb too. Oh, uh, you might want to look me up. Like, yeah, what do you do? Yeah. I have a yeah. podcast. Yeah. Okay, so does everybody else. You know what sucks guy. when you do like the Ron Burgundy voice and you think the other person's going to get that and then you know, you're like, I'm kind of a big deal. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, like, yeah. I say that. Some people get it, they laugh, and it's really funny because you just have to, in uh, a situation like that, you feel like that guy, right? Yeah. Dude. And so I'll play that character sometimes. And then if someone, it goes over their head, then I'm Now you really look stupid. Yeah, now I look really stupid. Well, anyway, yeah, she looks it up. Up. Oh, okay. She I'm sees she out. sees the name. <laughs> She's not a listener, but she sees the name and she goes, "Oh, I have so many listeners of yours who You're come the journey here. guy. You're the, the journey yeah. guy. <laughs> man. Listen, <laughs> loves the journey. Let me tell you guys something right now. Guy, you're the, the you're man. That guy. You're the journey guy. Hold on, hold on. Oh, the man who gonna, loves the journey. We're gonna drum this to death. He's gonna walk further. He's <laughs> no. gonna walk but, further. But hey, we have a lot of mind pump fans that apparently talk about us when they go into the physical store. Oh, so we great. have people come in all the time who listen to your show and say they heard about our store from you guys, which is crazy because you got to use our code online yeah. to get your discount, not in the store. Yeah. They just want them to know. How great is that? Yeah, fans secret want yeah but that, shape, that goes back you know, to the like statistic that I always have to negotiate when I'm talking to these brands. That's who, what I'm saying. They want, needs to pay who, us more. Who, yeah. <laughs> Who want two or three X ROI? And I go like, listen, they've already done plenty of research on this. Like, fifty percent of the people don't use the URLs, even if it saves them money. I don't, you know, but they will go check it out because they trust you because they like yeah. Sal Stefano from Mind Pump. They've heard him forever. They happen to be shopping on Santana Row. Oh, look, there's a Viore store. We got to go check it out. The guys yeah. at Mind Pump talk about, it. and then they go in and then they buy, and they're not tripping over fifteen percent or twenty or twenty five or whatever the hell they get for the discount. Biggest discount you'll get. You just anywhere. need to convince yeah. them to make the Mind. <laughs> Pump, uh, uh, Sal, wife beater. I think oh, that's, that's God. you know, it's a given. That's there, when. That's yeah. when. That's when we've made it. That's, that's we've made start, it. Yeah. When they start making. Wife. When a company like Dude, yours, this isn't really our brand. Brands, <laughs> brands a beater. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? When that happens, I don't think that's ever happening. Uh, when that happens, sure hey, happen. yeah, when yeah. that happens, I'll be like, yeah, we made yeah. it. They've already got a four billion dollar valuation. I don't, <laughs> think, I, don't think, I don't think we're going to surpass it for them to make. They'll just call them WB shirt. They won't even say wife beater because that's that's politically correct. Yeah. Hey, you got to go check out a company called Ned. They make hemp oil products that are packed full of CBD and all of the cannabinoids you'll find in hemp. You want all of the cannabinoids. They work better together than they do individually. This is the only CBD product that you take that you actually feel. No joke. If you get their hemp oil, okay, so Ned has a hemp oil, three different strengths. Get one of them, take it. You'll feel it about 45 minutes later. This is not true of other CBD products where you're kind of questioning is this even real or not? Ned is legit. It really works. It's the only cannabinoid-based CBD product that we've ever worked with, and it's for a reason. Go check this company out. Go to helloned.com. That's H-E-L-L-O-N-E-D.com forward slash mind pump, and then use the code mindpump22 to get 10% off your order. All right, here comes the rest of the show. Our first caller is Chloe from Michigan. Chloe, what's happening? How can we help you? Hi guys, um, thanks for having me. I'm super jazzed to be chatting with you today. Awesome. Um, gonna get right into it because my question is kind of long winded. Um, so I've been training for nine years. I started off doing CrossFit and then I did a little bit of competitive weightlifting, Olympic lifting. Um, and then for the past couple of years, I have been following Paragon's physique program. Um, and my question, I wrote that I train or lift four days a week, but uh, in reality, I teeter between three and four days depending on what my schedule looks like and you know how I'm feeling and whatnot. Um, 
I do yoga one time a week and then I prioritize walking my dogs every day, but usually it ends up being about uh, five times a week, depending on whatever I have going on. Um, I'm 31 years old. I weigh 149 pounds and um, I'm an attorney. Um, my question is related to training an individual with adrenal fatigue. So for the past three years, I have struggled with poor sleep. Um, it became really bad this past February and I um, sought help of an integrated medicine doctor. I wasn't able to get in to see her until April. Um, she ran a bunch of tests. She did some micronutrient deficiency testing and then a Dutch test and um, put me on an anti-inflammatory diet. Um, things were going really well. I learned that I have a histamine intolerance and then, um, you know, I was doing okay with the diet and then my brother uh, unexpectedly passed away about a month ago. Um, and you know, the diet kind of took a back seat uh, and whatnot. Um, that same week I got my, uh, uh Dutch results back, um, and realized that everything uh, is low. My testosterone is low for my age. My estrogen is low, progesterone is low, which is what my doctor says causing my poor sleep, and my cortisol is also low. Um, so she put me on uh, a bunch of different supplements. I'm <clears throat> continuing the anti-inflammatory diet, and I asked her, you know, what what does my exercise look like? And she just said, don't run any marathons. And so um, my question to you is, like, what type of training would you recommend for somebody who is uh, dealing with adrenal fatigue in terms of intensity, duration, and frequency? And then secondarily, um, uh, I'm assuming that being in a caloric deficit isn't a stress on the body, but I don't know. Um, well, should I be at maintenance right now or should I be in a surplus? And just curious to know your thoughts on that. Yeah, good questions. First off, uh, um, uh, my condolences uh, about your brother's passing. That's, that's terrible. Thank you. Um, now adrenal fatigue, now they call it HPA axis dysfunction. Uh, so that's more of the, the medical term. Basically the hypothalamus, the pituitary and the adrenals are off. And in your case, it's measuring is everything coming out low. <clears throat> so you have to really prioritize your health above all else. And I would scale your training way back. Like two times I'd a go. week. I'd go one or two days a week of strength training yeah. max. I would okay. do the, the yoga, make sure it's more of a yin style yoga kind of a recuperative, relaxing yoga, no, nothing power, nothing heated, uh, just kind of relaxing. Meditation would also be very good. And then diet wise, you're, um, what you think is, is absolutely right. I'd have you at maintenance or a slight surplus just to okay. give your body nothing else to be worried about or be stressed about. And then your workouts, the way I would treat the workouts is as stress relief. So go into the workout and really think about what's going to make you feel good. Um, while you're, while you're feeling the way you are. So that may mean your workouts are lower intensity, it may mean some of them are higher intensity. But really got you got to really get your health back before you push anything with your workouts. Be careful with that advice though because you know sometimes we misinterpret what feels good, right? Because when you're in a state like you are right now that that rush of cortisol after your a hard workout sometimes feels good and is misleading. Like mm -hmm. uh, clients, like in, in your case, sometimes will don't use the workout to distract yourself. In other words, yeah. I, 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 I did. You, did you also say? Did I hear you say you're a lawyer too? Yes. Oh yeah. Okay. So it's probably a pretty high stress job in addition to what you got going on. So yeah, I mean, and and that's how I would. So based off of my week, like speaking as you, uh, I would. That's what would drive and steer like what my workout looked like. If I had some, if I had a couple good days of good rest and work. I got a lot of stuff done at work. I don't feel like I'm behind. I'm not like staying up super late and grinding. Um, okay. I'm gonna go to the gym and have a good hard workout. Um, flip that scenario. It's, uh, the opposite. It was, Oh my God, work is just, I'm overloaded. It's staying up late. I'm grinding like crazy. Like, okay, now my workout is going to be more recuperative. I'm gonna do some more mobility stuff, some maybe yoga. I'm going to do, you know, maybe I'll do some lifting, but it'll be very light as far as the intensity. It's just, I'm going to go in there and get a little bit of a pump and do some movement. And I want to walk out of the gym, like feeling energized and good. Not like mm -hmm. I crushed the gym and mm -hmm. I, and I have this rush of cortisol. I want to feel like I feel good. Like, Oh wow. I'm even more energetic for the rest of my day based off of the way I lifted. Do you do any meditative practices currently right now? So I just started um, doing some breath work. Mm -hmm. um, it, is that what you mean by meditation? That'll work. Yeah, no, definitely. I was, I mean, that's kind of where I was going in terms of, I, yeah. I, I don't know if you mentioned Wim Hof and you're trying to like 
for me, that was a very um, applicable way to get into meditation in terms of like the way that um, just, it just helped to kind of get my, my entire focus in that direction with uh, tangible ways of, of approaching it. Uh, Cause I know it's yeah. kind of one of those things like, you know, especially if you're a type A kind of a person, it's, it's a hard headspace to get into just um, by sitting there and kind of trying to, to think about it. So to, to put yourself in classes or, or, you know, settings like that, I think, you know, it's a good, good idea. Yeah. To be, to be more specific, daily activity is good. Um, hard workouts is what I'm telling you to scale way back, you know, so strength train one or two days a week, but daily activity, daily walks, daily movement is, is fine. It's really good for you. I wouldn't do five days a week of strength training or four days a week of strength training. I think that's too much for you right now. Yeah. I think your, your, your body needs to, you need to, when you're, whoever you're working with, the expert that you're working with, when your hormones start to come back into balance, that would be the time to scale up the the workout. Once everything starts to come back in balance and is more stable. And slow and go back and measure still, right? So like just yeah. as you start to feel good, you go, okay, I'm starting to feel good. Yeah, don't, don't turn it all the way up. Yeah, let's add one day of resistance training. Let's go back and measure. Am I still good? Am I still feeling great? Am I still, is everything up? Okay, cool. Now I can add another, like versus, oh, I'm good again. Now go back to my five days a week, crushing it, getting after it, like allow yourself to scale slowly up and always be checking back in with yourself. A good program to follow. MAPS Anabolic would probably be good. And I would do one or two foundational workouts a week and then just be active throughout the week. I think that would be appropriate for you at this moment. Um, and monitor the intensity. So even with the hard foundational workouts, you might even need to scale down the intensity depending on how you're feeling. Chloe, are you also taking advantage of the, the free forum with Dr. Cabral? Yeah. Yeah. I actually asked the question there last week just for some more resources that I could look into myself. I would read up on that or, or listen to any episodes that they offered. And they gave me a couple good sources. Good. And they do, a, they do testing as well, but they do, they're very comprehensive. So I like Dutch test a lot. I think that's a mm -hmm. superior way to test hormones because your hormones fluctuate throughout the day. And a Dutch test for people who aren't familiar, this is you're testing your hormone levels throughout the day. Uh, but there's also hair tests you could do to look at like mineral deficiencies and metal and, and heavy metal toxicities, uh, a stressed body doesn't do as well of a, a good of a job of detoxifying the body as a non-stressed body. So you can look at Dr. Cabral's team, maybe work mm -hmm. with them to do some further testing to just kind of, you know, get more fine tuned with what you're doing. Okay, cool. All right. Did you see, did you say MAPS anabolic? I, I have that one. I just want to yes. make sure that's. Yeah. MAPS anabolic one or two foundational workouts a week uh, is what I would do. And then, the, okay. and then the rest of the week, you could just be active and keep the intensity real low with the activity. So I could like keep my yoga and my walking if I wanted to yes. add in another day of yoga, would that be fine? As long as it's a good restorative yoga. Okay. Don't, don't, don't try and do strength training yoga. Yeah. Cause there right. are yoga or classes that are like yeah. something like high intensity. Yeah. Like yeah. Merged a lot of them. No, yeah. I would, I would do, I would look for yin. Yin yoga is a really good option. Okay. Okay. And good luck. It's going to take a little while. Be patient, please. It's going to yeah. take a good six months to a year for you to feel like your old self. Um, but if you don't, if you don't heed the warnings, it'll, it'll never happen. Right. Right. Okay. All right. Cool. All right, thank Chloe. you. Thanks for calling in. Thank you, Chloe. Thanks. Yeah. And I, I just wanted to thank you guys. Um, you know, the first episode I heard was, uh, why women should bulk. I listened to that about a year ago and I share that with all of the women in my life and, uh, friends and family members. So, um, just thanks for putting out really good content. I appreciate yeah. it. No problem. Thank, thank you. you. Nice. We should got our contact info. We need a good attorney, don't we? Usually, <laughs> always. Well, what yeah. kind? Did she say our corner? What either. kind of attorney did she, she didn't say? say what she she was. didn't say. Yeah, yeah. It's don't. always good to have an attorney friend. You, know? <laughs> you can never have too many of them. Never. <laughs> I need an attorney. I need a judge. I need a police chief. I sound yeah, like a yeah, mafia. Yeah. No, you know, I um uh, I feel for her because when you're in that state and you feel bad, um, yeah. you it's like you want to do more to help yourself. And the answer is doing less. Yeah, yeah. it's like counterproductive. Which is yeah. like hard to do, especially if you're somebody that's, you know, she's accomplished, she's an attorney. So she's used to doing more to get what she wants, probably. Well, what are what are some things, I mean, so we can help, I know we didn't go into it with her, but maybe when she listens to this later that, uh, like, I think what makes it hard is we, we look at the traditional things of like my body, my strength, the mirror. Yeah, yeah. When now I, I would want her to shift her focus on like, hey, how was your sleep? You know? That would be the number one focus. Right. How's your, how's your yeah, sleep? sleep. How, how's how's your, your mood? Yeah, how's your mood? How's your, how's your how's energy? Cravings? Are you starting yeah. to see less cravings now? Like, so these are the things that, uh, it, you know, by us scaling back on the intensity <clears> in, the, in the gym, 
Um, of course, we're, we might potentially get weaker. Of course, yeah. we may not be as buff as we were a month ago, but your health is our number one focus now. So let's not use that as our markers of we're doing well. And let's look at these other things totally. that uh, that we want to pay attention to. And so that will help you stay motivated and focused is looking at those things and really l- let that be like, oh, uh, this I'm, I'm having success with with working out Dude, only one. I worked out for almost two years like that. It was mm-hmm. almost because I had a, a, a family member that was going through some, and they ended up passing away. It was a real tough battle with cancer. And it was two years of me working out to maintain my health. Literally, I would just work out and like, okay, how can I stay healthy so I can help this person? It was not PRs. It was not how much muscle I could build. It wasn't burning body fat. It was literally, I'd go in, I have an hour. What can I do to feel good and to help myself? And sometimes it was like one exercise and then walking on the treadmill really slow yeah. is what it looked like sometimes. So it's real tough. Our next caller is Josh Josh from California. Josh, what's happening, man? How can we help you? Hey, you guys. How's it going? I uh, appreciate the time to uh, chat with you and get some little bit of help here. I, uh, I'm working as a food coach for uh, a lot of clients now. I've been doing it for about a year after getting involved on the physique competitive side um, and really kind of to kind of reallocate that focus towards helping people versus kind of just doing it myself. So I have a client um, who's pretty locked in with food. He's in his early 30s and he's like typical early 30 year olds trying to lose a little bit more body fat um, and get a little bit more lean muscle. He's in that 25% body fat range. He's about 5'10 and 190 pounds, and I'd say average workout experience. Um, so we started his diet plan. It's all macro-based, and that goes pretty smoothly. But where I'm struggling a little bit is pointing him in the right direction from a workout regime perspective. Um, his work schedule is very, very unique. He's a New York tugboat, ca- tugboat captain, and he works two weeks on, which means he literally lives on this tugboat for two weeks. And then he has two weeks off where he goes home and he's not working. The two weeks where he's off, it's really easy, right? He can go to a gym. He has access to anything he needs to from a gym perspective. And that's pretty fluid. But the struggle here is that when he works the two weeks on the boat, he works in six hour increments, which means that he has pretty limited time to actually get a workout in maybe about an hour a day, which isn't terrible, but his, uh, sleep schedule in particular is really broken up into like two or three hour increments, maybe twice throughout the day. So I'm really struggling with a helping him find a consistent program that you can kind of break up with amongst the two weeks. And then probably more importantly, work on a program that lets his body still recover from a sleep perspective, because I know that his schedule, you know, he could be, uh, you know, awake at two o'clock in the morning and be awake from two to four and then have to, you know, go back to sleep for 45 minutes or an hour. It's just, it's so hyper inconsistent that I worry about putting him in a position where maybe he's pushing it a little bit too, too, too hard versus, um, you know, appropriately be, being able to scale back and set him up for success. What, what is his primary goal? He's not trying to compete, right? He's, that, that's just, no, no, no. what's his primary uh, goal? Yeah. He's, he just, he, I think he's 33, 32. Um, he's in that, you know, 25, maybe closer to 25, 30% body fat. And he's just trying to kind of lean out and ultimately get to where he probably looked at like 22, um, which I think is pretty normal for us early 30 year olds. Um, but, uh, yeah, no competitive, you know, um, uh, okay. I mean, aspirations. I, I mean, I mean, this is very doable. I mean, it's not, I, I actually think that, uh, with his poor sleep schedule on the tugboat, I think trying to do too much on the tugboat will will end up uh hurting you than helping you so and if you train really well and you're eating really well when he's back in town and stay very consistent with that so long as we he uh you know as i always say on the show he doesn't eat like an asshole on the tugboat and he sounds like he's probably doing physical manual labor maybe get some trigger sessions in there maybe give him some bands and he does some trigger work on there some body weight work you'd be surprised of what he could maintain during that time. It's really him not going off the deep end and totally eating off the rails and not working out for those two weeks. And then he comes back and then it's just like, we're going to take these yeah. big steps back. I think 20, 20 to 30 minutes uh, of daily mobility slash a little bit of strength training um, on the tugboat would be totally fine. You could use a suspension trainer or bands to make it really convenient. Although they don't have any. I remember we had somebody call in for, for tugboats, and there's nowhere to put the suspension. Trail. Really? Yeah. Okay. Because it's all waterproof. Well, then yeah, it would be body. Bands. Yeah, body weight and but bands. bands yeah. Yeah, body, body weight and bands. Body weight and bands. And, and then the two weeks he's off, obviously he would just train like he normally does. 
But yeah, diet's going to be the big one with fat loss. And you said he wants to get down to 22% body fat? No, sorry. Maybe I misspoke. He's in that like 25% range, give or take. Um, but he's trying to, you know, probably ideally would be in more of like a 15 to 18% yeah. range. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's going to be a largely, um, the result of his diet. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah. but on the boat, he could do 20 to 30 minutes a day of some kind of exercise, body weight bands. It could be mobility work. And then two weeks when he's back, he trains normally. It's not that bad. Actually, to be honest with you, studies are showing that that really doesn't make that big of a difference. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. You know, as long as he's active and he does those two weeks of traditional strength training, he'll probably progress just fine. Yeah. I know you guys always cite that, what, like three weeks on, one week off study. Right. Yes. That's uh, yeah. really good results. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Um, okay, cool. And then I guess just as a follow-up, do you guys think it's appropriate to, um, for when he is home for those two weeks? I was thinking something specific to like MAPS um, aesthetics to kind of like match his, his kind of goals. Uh, maybe MAPS anabolic. Aesthetic is really high volume or performance. MAPS performance might be more appropriate. A lot yeah. of people will, will they, they tend to navigate towards aesthetic because they like the, the, the name body, and its yeah. body, but it's really high volume. Yeah, he should work to that. Like that should be the goal right. to get him to aesthetic, but I would run him through our normal uh, anabolic performance and then aesthetic yeah. to get him there. So, so that, and that's how I would set it up for him. If like, hey, I know you want to get into body sculpting and you want to look a certain way. You know, eventually I want to scale you to this much volume, but we need to start here first. I'll start in an anabolic phase, and then we'll work our way into performance and then work our way into aesthetic, right. which also as a trainer, I mean, that's uh, to me, it's, it sets you up for your resign for the next six months or nine months right there too, of yeah. telling him that this is what we're going to do. We're going to follow anabolic when you're on the boat. And here's how I would do it too. I'd be, he would be running anabolic when we're in town, when he's out of town, I'd give him some body weight stuff or some band stuff. If you don't have maps anywhere, Doug will send you maps anywhere. You can pull from the programming in there and just let it interrupt the program and then and then continue right where you left off in the program uh, before when he's in town until you get all the way through anabolic that way and then go to performance. Same thing. Run performance at, to a T when he's on the boat. Then he's running kind of a right. maps anywhere type of protocol and then and then continues on with performance when he gets back and just keep running the programs like that. Yeah, that's perfect. I think Maps Anywhere might be the only program that I don't own from you guys, so that would be amazing. Oh, perfect. <laughs> yeah, cool. We'll send that right yeah, over to you. Doug will send that over. Yeah, appreciate you guys. Thank you. You got it, Josh. Thanks, man. Take care. Very uncommon schedule, right? But challenging. Yeah, yeah. Real uncommon. Now, tugboat, that's the boat that's like a it's like a tow truck, right? They go yeah. out and the boats that are stranded, they Hence pull the them. name. That's yeah. what I figured. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I figured. Yeah. I don't know. When I was a kid. Nothing, nothing gets by you. I'm telling you. <laughs> Just want to make Let's sure. Let's break this down, you guys. Yeah. yeah. It's a boat that tugs Tug, things. Tug is the, uh, that's the one, uh, what's his name, pulled with his teeth, right? Isn't that what he pulled? Tugboat? Did he no, pull he didn't tugboat? Pull a tugboat? I think it was a Jack rowboat. Jack Lane. Yeah. 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 Rowboat. So you were doing good there for a second. No, okay. Jack Lane. It look it up. He did Doug. not pull a tugboat. Jesus somebody, Christ. Somebody pulled a tugboat. So uh, somebody pulled a tugboat. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> somebody tugged Doug, a tugboat. Google who Maybe. pulled the tugboat. <laughs> yeah, I'm right. sure. I'm sure Adam knows something. <laughs> it is somebody tugboat. did it, you guys. Somebody, somebody pulled the tugboat. Yeah, no. I'm telling you, somebody did. No, dude. but that you know that's a, that's a tough. But you know, two weeks on, two weeks off with activity on the off, whatever. That, as long as it's some kind of activity, yeah. Yeah. you're fine. The key is you're diet. Totally fine. They, honestly, the key is it the really, diet. That's really gonna is. be the especially tough yeah. If he's talking about body composition, I mean, that's really where you need to live anyway. And 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 I think the risk that you run is, as a trainer who's coaching someone like this is trying to get them to do too much in a, a state where they're probably not sleeping very well and right. don't have a lot of time and then he then he over then when he does train he's kind of over training the body and then cravings are up and yep. then he makes bad choices yep. it's like it's you know easy what? to step over that line with exercise and then yeah, he comes I, home and he's exhausted for five days six yeah days. I, what i would do if he was my client i would put all the energy around okay let's talk about what food choices you have on this boat and let's try and full really, prep before you even leave. Yeah, let's yeah. let's manage that really tight. And then, hey, three days a week, I'd like you to do these movements. Do your best. I know you're gonna be working on that boat. Like I'm sure it's a physical job. Yeah, I don't think he's probably just sitting on the boat with his feet up. I'm sure there's probably he's doing like manual labor yeah. all day long. Yeah. So he's probably pretty he's active. Tugging. On, he's yeah. tugging he's everything. Tugging. <laughs> Tug, tugging all day. Our next caller is Sean from Massachusetts. Sean, what's happening, man? How can we help you? Hey, how you doing? Uh, so I'm 32 at the end of this month. Uh, I decided for some odd reason that I was going to become a pro wrestler uh, for my sons. And so I did a camp and it was actually coincidentally the same day you guys dropped MAPS cardio. And I was looking at MAPS cardio um, and I was just trying to figure out how to 
do the MAPS program on top of training. It's actually Tuesdays and Thursdays uh, from 7 to 10 p.m. And then I do yoga um, once a week. So I was just trying to figure out how to balance everything out and kind of not get burnt out because uh, the training, I'm not going to, I wouldn't be having my first uh, wrestling match for like six to seven months. So I'd be training pretty much for that long. Uh, so that's pretty much where I'm at trying to figure out what to do so I don't get burnt out. All right, good question. Okay, but- yeah, we'll get to that question, but <laughs> I want to find out, like, what inspired this? Did you just, like, suplex one of your kids and we're like, I'm good at this? <laughs> uh, uh, I, I grew up out? with, like, Stone Cold and The Rock and stuff like that, and I watched it, and then, you know, uh, there's, like, a lot of local shows, and I took my kid to it one day, and he kind of fell in love with it, and I'm like, man, I want to I wanna do this for them, and I have, like, this whole thing planned out in my head, like, of how I want my first match to go and like be like sitting in the crowd type of thing and have somebody come out and like challenge somebody in the crowd and have that person be me just to see my kid's reaction. Um, you're going to be a heel or a hero. uh, Yeah. And I've always loved it. Um, I feel like this is how you convinced your wife. Yeah. Yeah. This is a great way to get out of the house, too, by the way. That's what I really really feel like. This is how you convinced your wife. He's like, like, honey, this is for the boys. I got to do something for my son. It's pro wrestling. I know. How does a a mom say no to that? I swear. God damn it. Yeah. She's not too thrilled about it. It was. I said it was. It was Bro, either we're that cheering for you, by the way. Yeah. Is I is I listen, babe. Yeah. I, I got to get a new motorcycle for my sons. You know, so. <laughs> yeah. so look, here's the deal. Yeah. I'm a two things. Number one, you're going to be a superhero to your kids, no matter what you do. Hell so yeah, I just want to break dude. that to you, yes. that down for you, whether you make they it or not. Worship. Yeah. yeah. You're, you're gonna your yeah. dad. Dad's a superhero, whether you go pro wrestling or not. All right. So yeah. let's answer the question with the training. Um, I think it, depending on the intensity of the two training sessions you're doing with pro wrestling. I'd probably mm-hmm. throw one or two strength training sessions in there uh, on top of it. And then I would focus okay. primarily on the techniques that you need to practice for pro wrestling. So a lot of people don't know this, but wrestling, even pro wrestling, even though it's scripted, you're doing the moves for real and they're very technical. It's not just the person performing the move, but it's also the person who's getting thrown that needs to perfect the technique. Otherwise you hurt yourself. So where I would spend my time, if I were you, a majority of the time I would spend is on that not on workouts. You, you look like a big guy. You probably got the the performance down. You got to practice the techniques. That's what's going to keep you from hurting yourself and keep you from hurting other people. Were you drawn to cardio for stamina reasons? Was that uh, something you're considering right now? Uh, so I own every pretty much every single program uh, from you guys except for like PD and like OCR. Um, and when I saw the cardio where – you know, you throw in either the hiking or the, you know, whatever you do. Uh, that's pretty much why I had bought it. And um, I've been playing around with it a little bit and I can actually break down what we do in the, um, in the uh, training sessions at the school. Um, but cardio maps, cardio just seemed like the perfect fit for something like that because it was only like three days a week. Mm-hmm. Yeah. When you're doing your, your, your wrestling training, it's, it's a lot of practicing the moves and techniques, right? Yeah. And, um, so the class that I had went to, uh, the first 45 minutes, which was the warm up, basically we were running up and down three flights of stairs for yeah. 10 minutes. Uh, we were doing fireman's carries with the guy behind us, um, for a few rounds. Um, and then we did like a hundred squats and then 50 push ups. And then that, that was the warm up, And then, you know, we got in the ring. Um, the first, they wanted to do like catch wrestling for the first two minutes, yeah. trying to see like who can kind of hang and who can't. Well, you know, me being one of the only guys that looked like I worked out, uh, I got thrown in there with one of the guys who's been wrestling for six years and who was the second biggest guy in there. <laughs> uh, I'm not going to toot my own horn, but I made him tap out. Oh. Um, yeah. So. We got, we get in the ring like 45 minutes after the workout. And then, you know, after that we work on like promos and talking, learning how to talk to the crowd and things like that. So it's not like seven to 10 is not a full intense workout, but there's like two or three hours solid. 
I feel like doing I, it. I feel like he could follow Maps cardio. Maybe. Mm-hmm. I mean, if if he was my client, because so pro wrestling training is very similar to if you took a, a competitive judo class or a wrestling class. It, what you just explained yeah. is what you would do in a high level judo class as well. I would go one day a week of strength training. And it could be full body, basic. So you could pick one of the workouts from from cardio, or you could go maps anabolic. And then you got your two days a week of pro wrestling. And then I would, if you can, I would throw in one or two more days of of judo or wrestling training. That's going to transfer way better mm. to the ring than more gym time. It's going to be way more carryover if you do something like that. That's a good point. Yeah, and I mean the catch wrestling. He explained catch yeah, wrestling so is so technical. That's a uh, that's old American submission wrestling. So America actually has a history of submission wrestling. They used to call it catches catch can was the name of it, and they would do yeah. all kinds of different submissions and and stuff. It's a very cool uh, form of wrestling. But yeah, I, I would do more of that. Um, and one day a week of, of gym work. The gym work, yeah, you'll get stronger and stuff, but if you want it to carry over to the ring, you got to practice more of that stuff. And because I'm speaking specifically to an athlete, I can be very specific with my advice. So that's what I would do. One day a week of strength training yeah. and see if you could throw another day or two in of wrestling or judo or something along those lines to make you... And then to Sunday, just keep- start working on your costume. That's what I would do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, start, start getting that down. Do you have a wrestling name yet? Did you come up with one yet? Uh, so I was debating, but Big Daddy Gaines. Yeah. No, Big All right. Well, you can't Gaines. take that's that's Je- that's Justin's name. You got to pick another. One. <laughs> oh <laughs> man, a, no, no. it's okay. You can have it, dude. I, I, oh wait, he I said Gaines. I said Cakes. It's yeah, Big Daddy Cakes. We call it. Justin. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Big Daddy Cakes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, that's hey, cool. so you would- it could be a tag team. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> Calm down, Adam. Yeah. I see this now. <laughs> no, that's cool, man. I, I mean, yeah, I'm a little jealous. Yeah. yeah. I, I like it, dude. I like it. Well, yeah, I, I agree. Sal's I, I love I love the advice. I think you could mold cardio to work, but I think what Sal said is is perfect. And yeah. it and it makes a lot of sense that if you've got the extra time, if you got the extra two days of lifting, you're better off putting in it towards a, a craft that is going to improve your craft. Because I imagine like that's your body fat percentage or your ability to bench press 50 more pounds is probably not what's going to make you a pro wrestler. Nope. It's going to be your yeah. your skills in the ring and maybe your personality and those yeah. And so mm-hmm. doubling and tripling down on those things is far better off than... I would, do, I would either do judo or greco if you can find a class that does either one and just go train with those guys. Um, and that'll give you some, some nice carryover to pro wrestling. All right. I mean, I just I love lifting, so it was. That's not what I want to hear because I want to do. I want to do both. Well, you got, hey, listen. Uh, yeah, listen, but if you really want to be, if you really want to be a pro wrestler, I think that's yeah. what Sal's saying is really good oh, yeah. fucking and advice it's for your sure. sons. Don't yeah. forget, yeah. Remember, it's for your, <laughs> for your man, boys. He's, he's gonna hold that. In you got to do it. Yeah. You got to do it for your kids. That's yeah. right. Yeah, <laughs> there it is. Use that angle on him. Instead of picking up weights, I got to pick up human bodies. That's, right. that's it, yeah. man. Hundred percent, brother. That's right. Do you have MAPS Anabolic, by the way? Because we can send that to you. I think the foundational workouts in there will be will be better. Just pick one a week. Oh, yeah. I have, uh, like I said, I have every program okay. except for PED. I actually just finished uh, MAPS Anabolic. Okay. Um, so I guess, I guess my other question, uh, like, aside from that, because it's going to be about seven months. After the seven months, um, what should I do as far as a program? Because, I mean. Well, will we know if you're a pro by then or not? I mean, I'm certainly not going to be a pro, but I'll at least have my first match under me. Okay. I mean, to me, that to me, I'm I'm staying. I know, and it's probably going to be hard for you to hear because you already admitted how much you love lifting weights. But Sal's advice, yeah. Uh, if you want to be a pro wrestler, I mean, I can tell from the the video, you're not a small guy. You got muscle on you, dude. You got plenty of muscle on you. Yeah. Get. I mean, double, triple down on your craft. Well, the technique and the yeah. skill of, yeah. of of wrestling is so important. Yeah. That that's where I yeah. would place. I would and and the stamina and the required. The longevity of it to not get injured. Bro, you need the technique. That to be is amazing. everything. Right. I mean, yeah. it, when people throw right. you, if you don't know how to fall right, and, and yeah. you guys don't work together and well, you're to fucked. me, when you become a pro, then worry about looking sexy. Exactly. Then when, once yeah, you yeah, become yeah. a pro, and, enhance it. Yeah. yeah from then, there. then when you become I'm a pro then we could talk about diet and looking even and more invite like, us to your shows yeah so. so for now if you want to become a pro then the advice that sal's given i think is spot on and it stays that way beyond seven months it stays that way until you become a pro that's how i would think yep. yeah 100%. yeah yeah when i did the uh that two minutes i mean i was already gassed out from the 45 minutes because you know doing the stairs and the fireman's carries and everything else oh, and yeah. uh he couldn't get me down and like i said he was doing it for like six years so He's doing it a lot longer than me, and he was getting mad he couldn't take me down. 
Uh, so he ended up like scooping me up on my shoulder, on his shoulders, like Brock Lesnar and just dumping me on my head. So oh my I, I, I just got dumped on my head and I popped up. I finally took him down. I just cranked, cranked his neck as hard as I could to put him to sleep. Cause I wasn't, <laughs> I wasn't going to lose, but, yeah. uh, that's great. It was it was the hardest two minutes of my life. Yeah, it was only two minutes. The stamina that you that's required for grappling, the best way to build stamina for that is just to grapple, grapple more. more. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. This, this is where the carryover is. It's a, it's yeah. a whole different level of stamina. A different type of stamina involves a lot of static specific adaptation, strength, there, yeah. and stability combined with cardiovascular. You know, and so it, it, you want to get better at grappling. You got to grapple more. That's the bottom line. Yeah. Sounds good. I appreciate you guys. I really do. Uh, I've been listening to you guys since. I want to say 2017 and uh, just a sidebar. Do you guys remember when you were shouting people out and you shouted the uh, New Bedford downtown post office? Yeah, oh, yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I do remember that. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm the guy who started it. Oh, I'm from, there you go. I'm awesome, from Mount dude. Pleasant and I got two of the guys into it and then it was like a domino effect. So oh, shit, I'm yeah. the starter. So yeah, yeah there's, there's no, that. there's no beef. Yeah. There's no beef between us. It was just all <laughs> good fun. But yeah. when I, when I heard them get a shout out, I'm like, well, I got to get a shout out too. I started it. Yeah. Well, you're here. You're on it, bro. <laughs> yeah. You're on the show. Exactly. Big daddy games. That's right. And you, Hey, you, exactly. sti- you, the game. you stick with it. We'll come watch you. How's that sound, dude? I'll, t- I'll yeah. come, come I watch pre- you. Go become a pro for those boys. Hell yeah. All right. I appreciate that guys. Thank all you right, so man. much. Take it easy. All right, brother. But when we were talking about pro wrestling, I just kept picturing what you guys would look like. <laughs> as, <laughs> as, a, hey, as a team, no, as a team, hey, dude. Come Adam, on, hey, bro. Adam would have one of those uh, Captain Case, no, dude. That Adam would have one of those masks on, like El Muchacho. No, 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 no. <laughs> El Muchacho. <laughs> I want to be the who was the who was the guy for the Bret Hart with the the mic the microphone and I was the one who and, uh, and you guys are oh, like he's like Razor Ramon but oh that's um, right yeah no 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 Rick Ravishing Rick Rude Ravishing Rick Rude that, yeah, the, hey, the, the, the mirror please God edit yes. a picture of it, Ravishing Rick Rude because yeah. that's Adam right there that is. <laughs> no I think I think one hundred percent we were right he he came up with a good excuse to get out of the house because the rest like <laughs> oh Adam, bro do that for my kids hey, for sure I, mean, I had to hey, say that for, for sure kids. that pitch was to close the wife yeah, yeah. for sure that my sons yeah yeah. Do She's this. like, God damn it! What do I say? Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah. no, you know, you, you got me. <laughs> here, so you know, a lot of people. So pro wrestling, it's scripted, but it's just like any other grappling, except for you Still, really. It's a sport, and you need to work together very well because you could really get hurt. You, and so it's very technical. It's extremely technical. So he's the time he's going to spend in the gym is like he's wasting that time. Well, I mean, yeah. a, a classic example to that point is you guys saw the big news that came out right this last week with Logan Paul signing with the WWE. Yeah. Right? Uh-huh. So he just signed with the WWE. He's got all kinds of years of wrestling behind yep. his belt, yep. and you could tell by the him going out there. I mean, he only practiced for like six weeks yep. going into it, but he was a natural. But he's a natural because he's been practicing wrestling for his whole life. You got to so. know how to fall, how to throw. There's yeah. different skills, techniques, and working together. And so you just got to spend your time doing that. And the gym, you know, once a week, max. Our next caller is Michael from Virginia. Michael, what's happening, man? How can we help you? Uh, hey, guys. Um, yeah, I just want to say thank you for taking my call. Um, I'm a big fan of you guys. I love what you do. So so thank you for that. No problem. Thank you. Who's Duncan in the background? I can't see from here. Who's that? Uh, that's, that's Ian Williamson. Oh, big, big oh, oh man, nice. Oh. Are you happy with the signing or what? Did you, would you Were you happy with the big deal he just got? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I got to see him live a couple times. Uh, I'm oh, a big nice. fan of his. Is he playing for the Wisconsin Wizards? Stupid, yeah. dude. Don't, don't try. Just stay quiet <laughs> for a minute. Okay? Just dude. stay quiet for a right. minute. It's a new team. The men are talking right now. Yeah. Just yeah. Really yeah. Yeah. Continue. All right, go, go ahead. ahead ask your question, Michael. Go ahead, bro. Yeah, so um, I wanted your guys' advice on growing the outside sort of side part of the chest that connects to the upper arm and gives it, you know, the real rounded look near the armpits. I have decent development in my chest, but I've always noticed it's a little bit of a lagging part for me. I have good strength and I have a good bench press, but I don't really see the fullness in it. I do high rep, slower movements as well, like dips and flies to try to get a good stretch at that point, but I'm not seeing, you know, the results that I want. I understand the way the chest fibers run and there's no real outer chest, but I would just love to hear your guys' thoughts on this. Yeah, I mean, that's you hit the nail on the head. I mean, if you look at the anatomy of the – so you have the pectoralis major and the pectoralis minor, okay? So – Major, you attach at the at the humerus and then all along the sternum. Then there's the pec minor, which is kind of on the outer part. And you really can't isolate outer and inner. Now, you could do upper and lower because of the way the muscle fibers attach on the sternum. But inner, outer, really there's no use in trying to isolate one or the other. It's just about developing the chest overall um, and building the chest overall. 
So I would focus just overall on building the chest and you can do your upper and lower chest exercises to give you that balance. But when it comes to upper and inner, really that's just a genetic thing for the most part. The, the best answer I feel for this depends completely on what you do consistently and what your what big exercise do I think you're missing or you're not doing enough. Yeah, what of. are you doing for your chest? So right for example, like, Incline bench press, obviously flat bench press, all, uh, both dumbbell and barbell, uh, obviously flies, uh, dips. Um, I would I would categorize as some of the that's the meat, right? And then when I think of the all those those big lifts for the chest that are going to develop the chest the most, I would I would ask you, okay, which ones are you really consistent with that you do most of the time, and which one do you think you neglect? The most of the time and the ones that you neglect i would put you to focus on that so like maybe you're not like a big weighted dip guy you don't ever really do that for the chest maybe that's not that would now become in our routine we are going to get strong at weighted dips and see what that does for your chest maybe you're a guy like i was in my 20s where i skipped incline a lot because i was weak in incline i, was, I hated doing incline bench because i had to reduce the weight so much compared to my flat bench and i wanted to bench heavy weight so i i did incline but infrequently in comparison to flat until one year I said, okay, my goal is to make my incline equal to my flat bench. And I did mostly incline for a year and my chest blew up. So really, you know, tell me what is your chest routine? Like? And, and after I've listed those, are there any exercise I listed that you think that you neglect in comparison to the others? Yeah, probably, probably weighted dips. I normally just do body weight for about eight to 10 reps or so. Okay. Yeah, you could try messing around with heavier weight, lower reps. Uh, eight to ten is not bad uh, with dips. Uh, you can even try banded dips and going higher reps, up to fifteen. So you can mess around with the reps there. But we're looking at overall chest development is really what you want to focus mm. on. You, you ever do a guillotine press? That's a good extra. That's a fun exercise for the upper chest. That a lot of people don't do. No, I've, I've never done that before. It's a sketchy looking one. It thing. is. It's a, it's a it's a go light with it, uh, but it's an interesting one. Uh, works really well for the upper chest. But really, it's about overall chest development. Upper, I'm sorry, inner, outer. You're not going to isolate one or the other. How's your shoulder mobility and, and stability around the shoulder joint specifically? And uh, do you do a lot of like overhead press? Yeah, I do a lot of standing barbell press, military press, and I don't really ever have shoulder pain when benching with barbells or dumbbells. Okay, so there's no issue there in terms of uh, range of motion and depth and all that kind of stuff. Like, you're able to hit that pretty easily? Yeah, I think so. Are, yeah. you, are you following one of our programs? Uh, I'm not currently. Oh, fuck. Well, well, well there you problem. go. There's your problem right that's there. A, that's the problem. Finally, Finally some, we get to You're it. following some <laughs> other clown's program online. That's yeah, the reason why yeah, your chest is yeah. not as big as it should be, bro. You yeah. have the wrong recipe. <laughs> we could we could have totally Jeez. cut all that crap out. Let's just oh, yeah. ask that question. <laughs> We're just shooting in the dark over here. Yeah. How long have you been working out for, Michael? Uh, Just about two years. All right. We're going to send over. Uh, let's start with MAPS Anabolic. Um, do the three foundational workout a week. Uh, variation. Then following that, uh, you could do their MAPS performance or MAPS aesthetic. But follow MAPS anabolic as it's laid out. Do three foundational workouts a week. So do that option. And then on the trigger session days, focus on chest exercises yep. with bands. Do that and then see what happens. Were you kind of writing your own routine before or were you following somebody's? I've, I've never really followed a scripted program. Oh, before. shit. Well, here you go, bro. That's going to make a big difference. Yeah. Follow mm -hmm. the program. I guarantee you stick to the program. You'll notice the difference in your chest at the end of the program. Yeah, you got to ask for directions. You know what I mean? Yeah. Sometimes. Yeah, yeah. You got it, man. Yeah, we got you. Yep. Don't act All too right, excited. So not in front of your wife. <laughs> Just gave you a free program. Don't act too excited there. <laughs> We'll work on your energy. He's just like your yeah. son, bro. He's a five or a seven. That's five like, or a seven. Five or a seven. That's all you get. You know cool. What I'm cool story. We got a six there. I saw the smile. That's all right. We're just thanks yeah, for calling in, Michael. We'll send you maps and a ball. Follow that program, okay? Yeah, yeah. All right. Thank you guys so much. All you right, got bro. it, man, right, bro. Thank you, bro. Is he not your son or yeah, what? Right oh, there. Yeah. Get excited, man. Yeah. So, just gave you a free I just, program. I just want a big chest, you guys. Yeah. <laughs> we'll help you. Yeah, you know that that the the we used to the old bodybuilding advice was uh, this is for inner chest, this oh, is for so outer, dumb. this is for lower biceps. Okay. Waste of time, total waste of time. You know why why that stuck around and still is is still around is because what it ends up doing is it. it the point I was trying to make, it gets somebody to do something they weren't doing before. Yes. You know, it's like, oh, if you do this exercise for your inner, it's like, oh, I never do that. Yeah. That's what yeah. I've been missing. They yeah. start doing it, then they see a difference in the chest, and then they think, oh, it was that exercise. Yep. It's like, no, it was the novelty. You've been doing the same bullshit for your chest for so many years. You finally did totally. something different. And it's like, so, and I really think the ones that I was listing off, the you know, the dumbbell, barbell, flat, 
incline benches, your flies, and then your dips are like the meat mm-hmm. for your chest. Totally. And typically when I meet somebody, I know he was very- They do like one or two a lot. Yeah, a, was, exactly. Yeah. There's always, you know, he just said dips, but I call bullshit. Like you're probably, there's probably a couple of those that you're neglecting, or there's definitely one you favor. And the one you favor, you need to back off a little bit and w- replace it with one totally. of those other ones and totally. you'll see a difference. And you'll you'll get, you'll get start to tap into, not quite, but you'll get a little bit of those newbie gains, right? Because it's That's an right. exercise you don't often practice. Right? Right. You'll see the strength go up and then the muscle typically follows. Look, if you like Mind Pump, if you love this show, check out mindpumpfree.com. We've got a lot of free guides that can help you with almost any health or fitness goal. You can also find all of us on social media. So Justin is on Instagram at Mind Pump Justin. Adam is on Instagram at Mind Pump Adam. And you can only find me on Twitter at Mind Pump Sal. How do I incorporate cardio and not lose muscle? I've seen people do this before where they'll start to lose the sharpness of their muscles or they'll start to lose the sculpt a little bit. And that's disheartening. But if you do it right, then you minimize that muscle loss or that metabolism slowdown. In fact, if you do it right, you can actually speed up your metabolism at the same time that you build stamina and endurance. You just have to be able to kind of program it properly. And the way to program it improperly is just to go do as much cardio as you can for as long as you can. Right.